Hey everyone, my name's Silver. Welcome back to my channel. And today, guys, we're going over my deck that I think is best for the Xeroth Dragon from Dragon Empire, and it's a Murakumo deck. Let's hop right into this because I am on a very tight time crunch to get this all done. We're running two starter. We're running two copies of our starter, Stealth Demon Crow Feathers. I mainly use it for its uh, Shadow Stitch skill. Um, at the end of the, at the end of battle, that this unit attacked a Vanguard. If if this unit was boosting, the attack did not hit. Choose one of your open rear guards in the back row, and you may move this unit to that rear guard. If you move this card, stand it. So I use this as my sort of my all around back row supporter. It does help the deck out a lot. Um, it does have a secondary skill, which I don't use, but I will read it. It's an act. Rest this unit. Choose a normal unit from your drop zone. Put it to the bottom of your deck. If that card has a shadow stitch ability, choose one of your units and gets 3k power until end of turn. This is a skill I use early game, but not pretty much late game. We're also running four copies of these unique heal triggers. When this is discarded for a G guard, choose one normal unit from your drop zone. Put it to the bottom of your deck. We run all four of them. We run Stinging Wolf, because I like the wolf. And we run Fox User, because, well, there's no other unit I really decide to run for these triggers. Um, And we do only run 12 triggers, it, it looks like. Unless there's somewhere else in the deck, which I'm not seeing. Yeah, nope, we run literally 12 triggers. There you go. So moving on. Um, we're moving on to the deck. We have two copies of Gate Gateway Stealth Rogue. He's Stride Fodder, and he searches out for um, another unit that isn't in this deck. Oh, correction, we run more than 12 triggers. They're just hiding at the back. We run the stand triggers. Um, put this unit to... Put this unit on top of the deck. When this unit is placed on rear, you may pay the cost. If you do choose one of your rear guards, not named it, search your deck for up to two copies of it with the same name. Call them to separate rear guards until end of turn. And at end of turn, not until at the end of turn, put them to the bottom of the deck in any order. So we run four copies of that stand as well. Sorry about that. We're also going to move over to our Stealth Fiend Lake Diver. Generation Break 1, Counter Blast 1. When this unit is placed on rear, you may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for up to two cards. With its name, call them to separate regards, and then put them at the bottom of end, at the bottom of the deck at end of turn. And that's sort of this whole deck shtick is just calling stuff. We run three copies of Stealth Fiend or Brokart. Counter Blast One when this is placed on Van or Rear. You and you have a Murakumo Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do choose a Murakumo Vanguard other than it, from your rear guard circle, search your deck search up for one copy with the same name as that unit. Call it to rear guard and shuffle deck. At the end of turn, place it at the bottom. So this likes to make columns, and it runs really well with another grade two. And we're just running four copies of the original unflip damage zone perfect guard. We're running um, stealth fiend emissary crow generation break one. When this is when this unit intercepts, search your deck for three cards named it. Call it to guard circles as rest, shuffle deck, and at end of battle. Those units get auto when this unit is placed into drop zone from guard circle. Place this card to the bottom of your deck. So it allows you to get a 20k shield just by intercepting with one. And then they go back to deck. So it's very helpful. We also run Stealth Dragon Orb Keeper. Choose two units. Choose two units named this. From rear, put them to the top of your deck in any order. At the end of turn, you may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for up to one grade three. Reveal it to your opponent and add to hand. I use this card to get out my ability, out the cards for my strides later on for my ultimate stride. And that's one reason why this deck is very powerful is I can get out the grade three very easily and add it to my hand. So moving on to our last grade two of the deck, we have Stealth Dragon Dual Weapon. Shadow Stitch retire this unit. At the end of battle that this unit attacked a vanguard, you may pay the cost. If the attack did not hit, you, you may pay the cost. If you do choose a grade 1 or 3 rear guard, search your deck for up to 1 card with the same name as that card. Call it to rear guard, shuffle deck, and at end of turn, put it to the bottom. Again, I ha <coughs> this card works well with this because I can call this, search out another copy, at the end of turn, if the attack didn't hit, I can choose either another Orb Keeper, Embassy, or another Grade 1. Or, sorry, I can't choose out the Grade 2s. But I can choose out another copy of this, which will allow me to call other Rear Guards I might already have to build a secondary column. Uh, I'm a little sick, sorry guys. 
Uh, moving on, we run the six-fold Flower of Phantasy Cherokee. Sher and the reason I run this card in this deck is if it's from hand slash deck skill, which is it's considered as the other grade three. So I technically run a total of seven of cards with the same name, which will always mean I can ultimate stride when the time comes. Its other skill is okay. Choose one, choose one or one or more cards with this with the sum of their grade being three or greater from hand and discard them. When this unit attacks or is attacked, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's vanguards, and that unit gets minus 10k until end of turn for each of the units with the for each of your units with this. It's another reason why I run this is because it's a nice grade three where I can call six to the rear guard and give my opponent minus 60k if need be. I personally like this one's limit break though, so this is the main one. Um, Counterblast one, choose a card named it from hand and discard it at the beginning of the guard step that that an attacked, that this unit is attacked, you may pay the cost. If you do choose one of your opponent's attacking units and then that unit gets minus 20k. I feel like it's better, but this does help out if your opponent strides into something like an ultimate stride and i realize that my proportions have been off this entire time for the video and i'm sorry i didn't realize until now so um it's also because i'm using the wrong application the wrong area to record this we're just going to move on to the g zone no regrets our first unit is a simple one we don't really use it when this is placed on van choose one rear guard choose a card from hand call to rear choose one rear guard until in turn it gets 2k and this, this unit, and it gets the ability to attack from back row. We don't really use a lot of these cards like this one. Uh, Soul Blast 1, when this unit attack hits a vanguard, you may pay the cost if you do choose one of your rear guards. Search your deck for up to one card with the same name. Call it to rear shuffle deck. But yeah, so these are more or less if you have to um, G, uh, G assist, but yeah, I don't use them at all. Moving on, we have the f four copies of the first um stride which is when this is placed on van choose choose one of your hearts search your deck for up to one card with the same name as that call to regard shuffle deck at the end of turn if you have a heart with this return that unit with the effect to hand choose one card from hand discard if you do not put this put the unit called with this effect to the bottom of the deck so i can either replenish my deck or add a copy of it to hand and then we run four copies of the new one which is counter blast one choose a copy with the name and turn it face up in G zone. If you have a heart with the same name, choose a card, choose one of your opponent's units, and it gets minus 5k until end of turn for each up face card with its name. In Generation Break 3, all your rear guards with its name can attack from the back row. So it makes it a very deadly threat. And then we run, obviously, Drachma for the Xeroth Dragon, which I'm, which obviously its skill is Counterblast 2 when in place. Retire all units on your opponent's field, including Vanguard, and bind them. Your opponent chooses three cards from hand, discards two, and then rides one. So that's what we run as the sort of main focus of the deck, and that's why I like this deck, is it's very consistent with getting this card. Uh, moving along, we run two copies of this G-Guard, which when this is placed on Guard Circle, choose... Choose one of your grade one or greater rear guards. Search your deck for up to one with the same name. As that unit, call it to guard circle shuffle deck until end of turn. That unit gets auto once this is placed and drops on, put it at the bottom of the deck. You could run the older G guards that are not G guards, PGs that when it says when this is placed on guard circle, choose a card from hand, discard guard, and you can use that. I just figured some of the there's not a lot of cards that use counter blast in this deck, but I wanted to be on the safe side. We also run one copy of this, which is when this is placed on guard during a battle that your vanguard was attacked by an opponent's unit. Choose one of your rear guards, move it to guard circle, and that unit gets a 15, uh, 5k shield until under turn. Search your deck for one card with the same name and call it to guard circle as well. So you're increasing guard power. Then we run two copies of this just for generation flipping, just in case I go first. I could G guard once, flip a unit face up. Or flip the G guard face up, and then if I need to, G guard again and get my Drakma off early game. So this unit's Counter Blast 1. Choose a face down G guard from G zone, turn it face up. When this unit is placed on guard, you may pay the cost if you do. 
If you one of your vanguards until end turn, it gets auto on this vanguard. When your grade three or less unit is retired from guard, you may pay the cost. If you do, put it to bottom of the deck, and this unit gets 10k shield. <coughs> wait, um, when your grade three or less is retired from guard circle, you may pay the cost. Wait, how does this one work? When this unit is placed on guard, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your vanguards until end turn. It gets auto. When your grade three or less is retired from guard, you may pay the cost. If you do, this put it to the bottom of the deck. Oh, and this unit gets 10k. Okay, I didn't see the parentheses then. So yeah, that's sort of my drachma deck. It's I like it. Um, it it's powerful in my opinion, but some people might not find it. But guys, I gotta go to work. So I'll see you all later. Have a wonderful day and peace.